one. Hey, what's up, Chicago? And welcome back to another episode of Speak Your Mind Radio. I am your hostess with the mostest, Queen Star, aka Ms. Hip Hop. And this is a very special episode, y'all. This is episode 497. We are three episodes away from the 500th episode, and I can't wait to present it to you because I'm excited. (laughs) But first, you guys, we're going to do an icebreaker question with my special guest. So let's jump into it. Teddy Bear? Hmm. Did you see the eclipse that happened on April 8th? Uh, Did I see it? No. I didn't have on the glasses. I wasn't watching. It's not a big deal for me. Um, Did I notice that the sky got a little darker? Absolutely. But it wasn't like a, oh, this is beautiful moment for it. That's, yeah, it wasn't for me. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Well, I didn't see the eclipse either because I didn't have the, the shades, but I did feel it. And I don't know too much about eclipses anyway, but I just know it was a big thing. That's what they say. But, you know, if, yeah. if it happens so often, it's not really special to me. But that's just me. That's yeah. Just me. Yeah. And ain't nothing wrong with that, bro. For real. Nothing at all. Um, so why don't you take the time out to tell everybody where you're from and introduce yourself? I'm Teddy Bear Jers. Um, They call me Mr. Vibe and B because when I get on that stage, I make people vibe with me. Yeah. Um, from Newark, New Jersey. However, I don't just claim Newark, New Jersey. It's the entire state or tri-state area. Um, but that is where I'm from. Uh, I don't want to give away too much because I'm not sure what questions you're going to ask, so I'm going to stop right there. <laughs> <laughs> that's smart. That's smart. Okay. So, well, I was actually going to ask you, uh, tell me a little bit more about your musical upbringing in Jersey. Well, let's see. Um, It's probably cliche to say this, but I started in church um, singing gospel. Uh, I was in church every Sunday with my grandparents who raised me. And um, I took a liking to the music. It wasn't the sermons. It wasn't the usher. It wasn't the deacons or the preacher. It was the choir. Um, I was a part of a choir called JDR Choir um, and Voices of Unity. And I just took a liking to music. By the time I hit high school, I had an uncle who was a producer and he literally made a makeshift uh, recording booth on my sun porch. And that's when I discovered my love for hip hop and R&B as an artist. I always loved it, but I didn't know that I could do it as well as I was doing it. So that's when I developed my love as an artist. That's a cool story. So your uncle actually built a studio outside on the porch for you to record on. Uh, Kind of, sort of. It wasn't outside on the porch. So a sun porch is an enclosed porch. So there's windows, um, you know, floor, ceiling, walls, etc. What he did was he put some wires out there, some patterns, some patent out there, you know, some soundproof equipment. And that's where he sent me to record while he was sitting in the bedroom at the computer doing his engineer stuff. So that was my actual first time ever uh, being on a microphone as far as recording music. I've done plays and a whole bunch of shows and concerts and fashion shows up to that point. But that was the first time I actually was considered to be an MC. And I actually started singing first. It wasn't even rap. Mm -hmm. So tell me about the first time you started rhyming. Uh, Same year. Um, same little makeshift studio I just talked about. Um, I just decided to, hmm, let me try something different. This was before Drake, who gets the whole nod of, you know, being a singer slash rapper or rapper slash singer, whichever one you like first. But this was before then. Um, and I, I was actually doing it. I used to walk around my high school singing and rapping songs and the entire hallway in unison would start singing and rapping with me you have no idea how many detentions and suspensions i got from high school because of that but it was a time it was a time like i was very popular because of that in particular that is so cool i could imagine that you being the whole vibe and the teachers and the whole um administrators administrators being mad at you like calm down you got everybody up in in an uproar you know (laughs) Only when there was a song that they didn't approve of. When they approved of the song, they were singing to. 
So that that was the funny part. Yeah, it was like a you know a double edged sword. Or one, if if they like it, they sing with me. If they don't, I get detention or suspension. <laughs> and it was all worth it. It was all worth it. The whole high school experience was worth it. I don't know for most. I didn't go to college, so that was my college. That that high school experience. So for me, yeah, for sure, for sure, and the socializing oh. and everything. I, I don't, I'm, let me, I'm being dishonest. I did go to college, but it was six years later after high school. <laughs> but I didn't go like immediately following high school like most do. Right, right, gotcha. So your music came naturally. Um, And speaking of the development of your music, now yesterday, bro, you just dropped a joint called Daydreaming, right? Ah, I don't know how you did it. It's like you just did it, it overnight. Did Mm -hmm. You talking about I sent to your DM? Yeah, daydreaming. How that you song, like it? I love it. I love all your songs. I like uh talk to me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I like explicit. I like freestyle thoughts, but we're gonna stay on daydreaming right now. Okay. Tell me about that joint. Um mm -hmm. all my music is centered around real life experiences. Um, none of my music is made up. None of my music is fabricated. If I didn't actually live it myself, someone close to me did. And I was just write what I like to call a movie about it. Um, so that particular record is that. Um, it's, it's basically a guy who I'm not going to say which guy it is. I'll just leave that to everybody's imagination. But it's about a guy who is having a battle with his own thoughts. Um, what I mean by that is he's dealing with multiple women, right? He's trying to find a way to keep all the women to himself. Um, one ends up being pregnant, who he ends up pledging his life to. Meanwhile, the side chicks don't want to leave him alone. Mm. He don't want the side chicks alone. So they end up coming to the baby shower, you know, just to get a glimpse so they, they actually know that it's real, that he's about to have a baby. And the song is basically him being conflicted with these thoughts like, yo, bro, wake up. You know what I mean? Like, you got to wake up. You can't you can't live like this. If you think there's going to be no drama, you got another thing coming. If you think there's not going to be no heartache and pain, you're crazy. So that's basically what that song is. Uh, basically him daydreaming with his own thoughts about what was currently going on in his life. Wow. Okay. That that that's a a lot of story, a backstory behind the song. Um, it's, it's another mm -hmm. another question I wanted to ask you is who is the feature? That's a sample. That's a that's a oh, sample. That is a sample. It's actually a song called Daydreaming. Um, please forgive me. Uh, I forget the name of the artist. But that is a sample. I want to say it's a 60s, 70s record. Um, but it's definitely a sample. Um, it, it sounds like it's live and I had somebody in the studio with me, but nah, I felt her vibrations on the record and it propelled me to write what I wrote. That feels so that felt so real. I I guess because I'd never heard the song before, you know what I'm saying? So it felt like it was all you. I wish. <laughs> I wish it was all me. Um, produced by my guy, Bori Echelo, who's also my business partner with Big Boy Sound Entertainment. Um, he made that. I told him I wanted to, you know, I wanted to talk my shit, but I didn't want to talk my shit in, a re in relation to street stuff. I wanted to talk my in relation to stories. That's that's what I'm about. I'm about storytelling. Like, I, I want to make you visualize every word that comes out of my mouth when I do this. If I haven't done that, then I'm not doing my job right. Well, you actually did. Um, I want to talk about um, the uh, what's it called? Exp explicit, uh, expletive. 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 Yes. Expletive. Yes. It's, every everybody. I said it, it wrong. <laughs> expletive is just if you're watching any type of movie and the. You know, the closed captions come on and you have chosen in a room. It's not going to actually say the curse words. It'll say, instead of to say expletive. So basically, I don't give a fuck will be changed to I don't give an expletive. That's I like that. Yeah. Okay. Um, and that song, you basically, you know what I'm saying, talking about you tired of being humble. 
You reintroducing yourself to everybody. You not playing no games. You turned the teddy bear into the grizzly, honey. <laughs> that is all facts. Um, the whole teddy bear portion, I didn't want people to think or mistake my kindness for weakness. Mm -hmm. So you get to a certain point, you do get tired of being humble, as you stated. Um, I hear everything. I hear the chatter. I hear the rumors. I hear the friends who's actually frenemies. You know, I, I hear all of that stuff. And sometimes you just got to remind people mm. whatever you are. And um, that's what I call myself doing on that particular record. I just wanted to remind people who I am and I do this. And if there's any issues, please, I'm not hard to find. Wow. 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 That's an invitation. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> for sure. For sure. Okay. Um, I want to pick, I mean, go back where a little bit, because I know we just talked about Daydream and being a sample. Now, it's one particular song I know was a sample, but you still killed it. And that's mm -hmm. uh, uh, Talk To Me. And that was uh, 1993, Tevin Campbell, Come and Talk yeah. To Me. The Can We Talk record. Can yeah. We... That record. Um, I'm sorry, what was the question? <laughs> 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 all right, right. No, I was talking about samples and how you you do the samples very well. Because if I didn't know Tevin Campbell, you know, saying personally, with can we talk? Then I wouldn't have known that that wasn't you. Because you do have this type of vibe that I can feel, like energetically through the music, and I love it. So that means a lot. That means a lot. Um, that particular record was produced by my guy, Unfamiliar Talk. Mm -hmm. Um. He, he's he's phenomenal with the samples. I wanted to take the sample and do something different. The Can We Talk record has become very popular um, over the past, I don't know, four years maybe, uh, popular to the point where DJs will play it at clubs and they will stop the music and the entire room will sing it to the top of their lungs. So I wanted to capitalize on that, but do it in my own teddy bear jerse way. Mm -hmm. Sample, he created the beat. Um, I had a whole different melody that I wanted to do. Da 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 da. So I, you know, I put words to that flow, and um, I spit some bars on it. And I was like, you know what? It would be dope if I had a female to hop on this record. Um, so I went to who was my home team at the time, Angel Blue, and she blessed it with you know her voice and her lyrics and um. Yeah, we did the video and it it was it was a big record for me. Um big in a sense where it was one of my biggest records that I've released to date at that time. Um we went pretty hand with that record. We did the video. My uncle Jamal Hall shot the video. And um yeah, it was fun. Um I Teddy Bear. So if I'm not appealing to the women, I shouldn't be calling myself Teddy Bear. <laughs> <laughs> Look at it. Like I have to appeal to the ladies. Um the guys, I rock with them. They rock with me. Yeah. They know what, et cetera. But I have to appeal to the ladies. At the end of the day, I love women. So because of my love for women, I wanted to give them something that makes them feel special. The words are, I fell in love with all your features. Mm -hmm. Now, on reasons. You understand what I'm saying? So it's mm -hmm. like I have to appeal to, to you guys, the women. Most definitely. You was on the, the, the Drake train before the, he was on the train. So, yeah, you was a conductor. It's it's funny to say that when he's like the biggest thing in music right now. But what you're saying is 100 percent facts. I just haven't had I just didn't have the uh, Little Wayne exposure to become a huge star, which, by the way, being a huge star isn't even my aspiration. My aspiration is just that I want people to walk away from listening to my songs like I like that or it sparks something in their brain or their heart or their soul to be compelled to listen and share it with someone else. Um I wanna I want to I want to elicit a feeling from people. That's the whole reason why I make music. Plus I just love to do it. Definitely, definitely. Um I know you said in the beginning of the conversation that you used to do like uh, plays and stuff. Do you, have you considered doing more um, of those things like films and short stories? I have a one scene cameo in a movie called King of North that is currently making its rounds on Tubi. Uh, that movie was shot X amount of years ago. Uh, Royal Family Films 
uh, Hall Mills Network, who continues to do movies to this day. That is the only time I actually dabbed into the uh, theatrical side. Is it uh, on my bucket list? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, one day. <laughs> one day. Yeah, you definitely got it, Teddy Bear, for sure. <laughs> um, I would just indirectly ask you, like, how did you come up with the name Teddy Bear Jars? But I, uh, we kind of discussed that a little bit. But tell the audience, though. So, believe it or not, I went through, like, a lot of different names. My first rap name was Jay Jers. Um, then that changed to Chubba the Bricks, like right? That. And then Chubba the Bricks changed to Teddy Bear Jers. Mm -hmm. Then I started calling myself Mr. Vibe and B. Now I walk around calling myself Big Jers. So, and believe it or not, each name, there's a different style of music. So it's like my evolution into becoming who I am today. I don't know why I change the name every time I evolve, but it's a thing. That's what I do. Um, Trouble the Bricks is more so the the gutter feel. Yeah. You know, you hardcore rapping with Chubba the Bricks. Teddy Bear Jers, you know, I'm trying to appeal to the ladies, but Jers is in that name, so I'm going to stay true to the Chubba the Bricks side, right? Um, yeah, that's basically it. Mr. Bob and B, you, you haven't been uh, fortunate enough to see me perform. No, but not yet. That I'm a whole vibe, you know? I don't just get up there and put the mic in my hand and stand in one spot and rap. Like, that's not what I do. Um, mm -hmm. There's a whole, you know, conglomerate that's with me. I, sometimes I say behind me, but they're not really behind me. They're with me. You know, I got a whole band that plays, you know, keys, drums, guitar, bass guitar. Uh, sometimes we get a horn section to pull up. So it's, it's all about the experience. If I can't create the experience, then I'm just not going to do it. But that's that's what it is for me. You know, like I, I want to I want people to walk away like, yo, that was dope. That's the ultimate thank you to me. Like that's that's worth a million dollars every time somebody says that to me. Yo, that was dope. That's yeah. all I want. Yeah, well, I'm going to add to that million and say you dope, bro. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. I mean that. Um, I actually want to ask you, if you don't mind, you know, if you can give us just a little taste of your voice, you know what I'm saying? Your, you know, your freestyle, just a little bit. Um, Any type of topic or you just want me to rap? You, any type of topic, just uh, go with the um, flow. We're going to give them expletive. We're going to... Uh... Ah uh, yeah, um, it's Teddy Bear from the Revenant. Pressure whoever think they relevant. Talk some aside for the hell of it. I'm comfy in my element. I'm in the room like an elephant. Ignoring me is not intelligent. Go try another regiment. These niggas scary and it's evident. The grizzly in me set a precedence. My shooters drift in elegance. They let them fly like a pelican and bust them down to the skeleton. My niggas, that's development. Money for the lawyer had the settlement. Pockets getting husky in Connecticut. So I appoint a delegate. Go and tell the world that I'm a specialist. Nigga, I'm the bar. I'm the definite. Even to the detriment of a fuck nigga had his testament. Turn the hardest nigga to a petulant. Send him like my Mexican. Stuff him in the whip like a Mexican. Make a nigga smell their own excrement. See, I done perfected it. Dropped another link and then connected it. Started from the mud and then erected it. Filmed and directed it. Got an LLC and then protected it. When be in the pain, I be rejected shit because I don't give an expert. Yeah. I fumbled Here over the bars, but yeah. Yo, yo, the way you rhyme Peloton with Skeleton. <laughs> I don't know how you came up with that, but it was wrong. You know what I'm saying? You must Thank have really you. pulled it out the mud on this one, for real. I tried. With every song I do, some hit, some don't, but I try with every record that I record. Yeah, um, I want to tell you, I'm not trying to compare you in any way because you're your own artist, but your voice, yo, it remind me of Rick Ross. Have you ever been told that? Every day. Dang. <laughs> I, I I feel like I've been compared to Rick Ross before Rick Ross even came out, but that's just I can't help my voice. Um, I would say that I think I'm better than Rick Ross. Um, that's just on some competition shit. I feel like I'm phenomenal, right? Um, but he is one of my favorite rappers. So 
I'm not going to take nothing away from him. I like the guy. I even like being compared to him because it makes people want to listen. You yeah. know, like, that's Ross. Yo, yo, Ross been spazzing. Nah, man, that's big jerks. So, you know, it's a little, it's a little, it's a little thing for me. Like, I, I like to be compared to, to one of the greats. For sure, for sure. Yo, Rick Ross, if you're listening, come on, speak your mind radio and meet this teddy bear jerks because he got something for you. You heard me? <laughs> Oh man, okay. Teddy Bear Jers, I, I just want to uh thank you so much for coming on the show today. And one last question, because I gotta know. I know you said Rick Ross was your favorite artist, one of your favorite Hold artists. Up. Yeah. Who else you listen to? So I don't want to offend the younger generation, right? But all of my greats, all of my legends are from my era. I'm not going to tell my age. We ain't going to go that far. Mm -hmm. But Jay Z, Nas, Little Wayne, um, Ross, as I've already stated, uh, I like Fabi a lot. Um, Drake, Cole, Kendrick, Ti, who I think is uh, underappreciated when it comes to his lyricism and his delivery and how he raps. True. Um, Dmx. Uh, out of the new crops. I, I I was a, a baby fan, both babies, but haven't really heard much from them lately. Um I was a meek fan of the first album, maybe, but I, it doesn't really move me these days. So those would be my favorites. Okay. All right. And my I'm sorry. I said, and my influences, those, those are not just my favorites. They also influence me to do what I do and how Yeah, I do. definitely. Um, it sounds like you got multi-millionaire blood in you um, because if you're just performing by yourself and you don't have all the extras, I still feel it. That's That comes from the heart, though. And Thank I have you. even... I haven't even seen you perform live yet. You know what I'm saying? But I know just from visualizing it on the screen, I can see it. Thank you. Thank yeah. You. Believe it or not, the, the confidence that you see right now on the screen is not what I have before I touch that stage. Woo. But once I do get on the stage, it's like everything else just fades away. And I just become who I am. So, so thank you. That meant a lot. For sure. For sure. And before we close things out, do you have any questions for me? Uh, yes, I understand you have a 500 episode coming up, and that's amazing. Um, there's not too many podcasters out here who are celebrating 500 episodes. Um, is that over the how, how many years have you been doing this? That's funny you ask because it's been over a course of five years. Wow, so we're talking, you know, on average 100 episodes a year. Basically. That's consistency, that's dedication. Um, you don't really see that too much from people in a podcast space. Um, they might give you 15 episodes and come back next year. You understand <laughs> what I'm saying? So it's like it's 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 a lot different. Um, salute to my guy Late Night Flight. Um, that's a podcast as well. So I I, I just when you do the podcast, there's a lot of research that goes into it. And I don't know if that's stressful or aggravating or annoying, especially if you want to interview an artist and there's not much out there about them. So your process, I'm very interested in because you have to literally be in tune with every person that you sit in front of to ask questions. So how does that work for you? Honestly, big jurors. <laughs> ah, I like that. Yeah, I did yeah. too. That was cold. That was natural. <laughs> Oh, uh, it yeah, it literally just comes naturally to me. I, I don't really have that recipe or that process to be exposing to everybody. It's just is I'm in tune with who I'm in tune with. It's a vibe. Oh, that's you. That's dope. Yeah. Really, really. <laughs> Do you travel at all sometimes to, you know, link with artists or interview them or whatever the case may be? Artie, maybe. Um, no, I haven't yet. I haven't. You gotta, you gotta start. You gotta, you gotta take this on the road. Matter of fact, make that a challenge for yourself. After your 500 episode celebration, make that a challenge for yourself to get out here on this road. Go to some of these 
these these these concerts and these open mics and these other venues and bring your camera, bring your microphone and start doing these interviews. You'll be surprised how far that would take you. And you have the personality to do it. So don't sell yourself short. Now, now what I say earlier, right? Every time you evolve. So now it's time for you to evolve. Like you got to get out there. Trust me. Thank right. me later. Nah, yeah, for sure. For sure. For sure. <laughs> Thank me later. And if you if you ever come to Jersey, make sure you come to Multiverse Studio. That's uh one of my places of business in which we have an event space slash recording studio, photography, etc. So you should definitely, whenever you come to the tri-state area, New York or New Jersey or Philly, we not far. Like, please, come holler at us. All right, for sure. Um, definitely keep that in the forefront of my cortex. <laughs> <laughs> Robin Barnes, okay. <laughs> All right, um, um, Teddy Bear Jars, I will talk to you later. Have a good one, Star. Uh, I sincerely appreciate you for having me, and I look forward to coming back on again. For sure, for sure. I got you. Peace out. Salute.